Hi guys, I put together this little kit uh, a little while ago, about a week ago. It's just a digital clock that runs off a banana, or at least it runs off zinc and copper and uses the banana as electrolyte. But as you can see, there's a bit of a problem with it. I'm not sure whether it's poor connections up here or poor connections actually within the unit. So it, it runs absolutely fine unless I happen to touch it. And then it stops, as you can see. So I'm going to see if I can actually solder onto this. I don't know if I can solder onto zinc or not. I'll give it a try. So then if I solder the wires on there, they won't wiggle off. First thing I ought to do is actually clean the tag. I might as well do them both. Copper one looks all right anyway. But they were only wrapped on there. They weren't actually soldered on. So I'll just scrape the surface. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Do it over there. Can we solder onto zinc? Looks like the answer is no. I do have some flux that we can use. So I'll go and get that in a minute. Yeah, we're quite all right with the brass or copper. I'll try some flux on there. Soldering paste, as they call it here. That reminds me a bit of a video I did a long time ago about soldering um, on aluminium, which you can do if you have the right solder. Or you can try doing it under oil, because as soon as you've cleaned off the aluminium, it gets a coating of oxide on it straight away in normal atmosphere. So you put it under water and not under water. You put it under oil and clean it, so it can't oxidize after you've cleaned it. Or you can buy some proper aluminium solder. But it does need more heat than your normal soldering. All right, dip that in there. And now have a go. And heat is traveling along the zinc rod probably cooking the banana from inside but yet this is not working i have got some different flux some acidic flux that i could try but i don't expect we'll get any difference baker's fluid this is what I always used to use, um, making fuel tanks for my model aeroplanes back in the 70s. Whoa, did you see that? <laughs> That's eating into it straight away. That's not going to be doing it any good. Uh, 
Well, we're going backwards here because that's actually made it worse rather than better. No, it just doesn't want to combine. So, all that's left there, I think, would be to crimp it in place. Right. These are the connectors I'm talking about. Bought them cheap on eBay a long time ago. And you just put the item in there and it, it's spring, um, springy metal. You push it down with the plastic and then when you release it, the metal comes up and grips it. So if we push that in there, there it is, it's gripped. Put that in that end, and that's gripped. Still tempted to solder that one, although we could just easily put that in that side. Might do that. I might just, um, Give these a bit of a shine now that we're actually working on them, and then put them back in. Just give them a bit of a scrape to shine them up again. So, we push that one in there. Push this in here. As soon as I pushed it in, we have power. February the first would have been quicker just to unplug it and start from scratch. Oh. First, three, it would be, wouldn't it? Three fifty six. Okay. Press that. Yeah. February the first. So we seem to have good connection now, and if I wobble it around at this end, it's not in the back of there. That's what I was worried about because I'd just touch it and it would reset. But it was obviously the connection at the other end, not the wires in the back of there. So there we go, we're back to our banana clock or banana powered clock with better connectors on it. Oh, and the other thing we learned was if that is a zinc rod, which it said it was in the instructions, I cannot solder to it. I can't get solder to take directly to zinc, which is interesting because I thought I could. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave us a comment so I know I'm doing and somewhere up here there'll be some links to related playlists, thanks again.